Hi, I'm Vanessa from SpeakEnglishWithVanessa.com. Are you ready to test your English vocabulary today? Let's do it. Get ready to learn 15 advanced English words for daily conversation. All of these words are a C1 level. That means that the Council of Europe has decided that they are advanced level words. But just a little note, these are words that Americans will use in daily conversation. They're not words like convivial <laughs> that we never actually use to talk about our lives. So I hope that these words will be advanced but also useful to you. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you a sentence with a blank. There will be two options. You can choose which word fits best in the blank and then I will explain it after three seconds. So you will have three seconds to decide which word is the best. Are you ready? Put on your test thinking caps and let's get started with the first sentence. Number one, my cat won't even me unless I'm holding a bag of treats. <laughs> my cat won't even acknowledge me or my cat won't even activate me. Which one is the best answer? Two, one. My cat won't even acknowledge me unless I'm holding a bag of treats. <laughs> Typical cat, right? This means that my cat won't take notice of me. They'll just walk away. They don't care about being pet. They don't care about being part of the family. They just want treats. They just want food. So that's the only time that they acknowledge me <laughs> is when I have some treats or some food to give them. Let's go to sentence number two. I prefer to buy products with packaging. I prefer to buy products with biological packaging or I prefer to buy products with biodegradable packaging. Hmm, these words seem pretty similar, right? But which one do you think is the best answer? Three, two, one. I prefer to buy products with biodegradable packaging. The important word here is degradable. That means that it's capable of being broken down. After five years or 10 years or maybe 50 years, that packaging is not plastic. That packaging is biodegradable. It will become dirt again. <laughs> and this is good for the environment. There is biodegradable packaging. All right, let's go to our next sentence. Number three, the lead actor was so it's no surprise that he won an award for his role. Hmm. The lead actor was so captivating or the lead actor was so corrective. Which one is the best? Three, two, one. You can say the lead actor was so captivating. It's no surprise that he won an award for his role. The word captivating means that he, or maybe some other item can be captivating as well, is capable of keeping your attention or keeping your interest. Sometimes when we use this word for people, we could also say that they are charming. Their personality attracts you. They are captivating. You can't stop talking to them or you can't stop listening to them or watching their performance. If you are a good actor, your performance is captivating. And who knows, maybe you'll win an award. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next sentence. Number four, the damage caused by the flooding was for the village. The damage caused by the flooding was failure for the village or the damage caused by the flooding was catastrophic for the village. Hmm. Which one of these C1 level words is correct? The damage caused by the flooding was catastrophic for the village. This means that it involved a lot or great danger or damage. The flood maybe completely destroyed all of the houses or all of the crops or something really important for the village. Floods are really scary. Mother nature is no joke. <laughs> so maybe we could say that the flood was catastrophic for the village. All right, let's go to the next sentence. Number five, not eating enough fruits and vegetables can cause vitamin, can cause vitamin deficiency 
or can cause vitamin damage. Both of these words kind of seem similar, right? But there's only one correct answer and you only have three seconds to choose. Three, two, one. The correct answer is not eating enough fruits and vegetables can cause vitamin deficiency. Deficiency means that there is a lacking or not enough vitamins in your body. Just as a little grammar note, we can say it can cause vitamin deficiency or it can cause a vitamin deficiency. You can either have the word a or not and both are completely fine. All right, let's go to our next question. Number six, the seeds that were during the winter grew into beautiful flowers in the spring. The seeds that were dormant or the seeds that were lazy? Hmm. Three, two, one. The seeds that were dormant in the winter grew into beautiful flowers in the spring. Both of these words have a similar meaning. Dormant and lazy means that there is some inactivity. There's no activity going on, but we use the word dormant for plants. We use the word lazy for people. <laughs> and if you wanna talk about animals, especially during the winter, we use the word hibernate. Bears hibernate, depending on how cold it is, where they're living. They stay in their cave all winter and they don't eat much food. There are other animals as well that hibernate. They don't do much activity during the winter. So we use those three words in different categories. All right, let's go to our next sentence. Number seven, technology has been used to working from home. Technology has been used to facilitate working from home or technology has been used to falsify working from home. Hmm, which one of these is the best? Three, two, one. Technology has been used to facilitate working from home. This means that with technology, there is an action or process that becomes easy or easier to do. It would be pretty tough for a lot of people to work from home without technology. So thanks to technology, it facilitates, it makes it easier for us to work from home. Number eight, I have always had a with medieval history. I have always had a fantasy with medieval history or I have always had a fascination with medieval history. Which one of these is best? Three, two, one. I have always had a fascination with medieval history. This means that I have a great interest and curiosity about medieval history. And this is true. This is a um, not very well documented part of history. So the little documents that we do have about it are really precious and so fascinating. All right, let's go to our next sentence. Number nine, one great way to practice language is to watch movies and TV shows in the language that you want to learn, like English. One great way to practice language immersion or one great way to practice language impression. Which one of these words is best? Hmm, three, two, one. One great way to practice language immersion is to watch movies and TV shows in the language that you want to learn. This is a great tip. Not always the easiest thing to do. I have a lot of videos on my channel helping you to take those steps to get closer to watching movies and TV shows in English, but it is a great way to immerse yourself or to have language immersion. That means that you're completely surrounded, figuratively or literally, <laughs> in the language. When you are listening to that movie, maybe you're even watching the English subtitles, you are in an English world. You are immersed in English. If you'd like to check out some of my videos that give tips about how to understand fast English, how to be able to understand uh, TV shows and movies without subtitles, check out this video that I made up here. All right, let's go to our next question. Number 10, my boss was impressed that I took the, to lead the project. My boss was impressed that I took the initiative to lead the project or my boss was impressed that I took the involvement to lead the project. Hmm. Three, two, one. 
my boss was impressed that I took the initiative to lead the project. This means that you have a willingness or a desire to get things done, to do something. To take the initiative is a fixed phrase that we often use. And we might encourage young people to take the initiative. Don't wait for someone to tell you to pick your clothes up off the floor. You should take the initiative. You should be willing to just do that yourself without waiting for someone to tell you what to do. Take the initiative. Take the initiative with your English learning. That's what you're doing right now. You're the one who searched online to find English lessons. No one is forcing you to do this. You are taking the initiative to improve your English. Great. All right, let's go to our next sentence. Number 11, the documentary about outer space was, the documentary about outer space was inspecting or the documentary about outer space was intriguing. Hmm, which one of these I words is best? Three, two, one. The documentary about outer space was intriguing. Ooh, we already talked about the word fascinating and there is a slight difference here with the word intriguing. This means that it makes you want to ask more questions. You become curious. Yes, you are fascinated or interested in the documentary about outer space, but it also sparks some curiosity in you. We can imagine some dry wood. When that wood gets close to some fire, there is a flame that goes up. This is kind of like what happens inside of you when you become curious about something. So when you see something intriguing, you want to find out more, you want to ask more. There is a spark inside of you that has <laughs> grown into a little flame and you want to learn more. It's intriguing. I hope that my English lessons are intriguing. They make you want to ask more questions and learn more and kind of go down that path of learning. At least that's the goal. <laughs> All right, let's go to our next sentence. Number 12, my plan to shovel snow for money became overnight when we got 12 inches of snow. Yes. My plan to shovel snow for money became lucrative or my plan to shovel snow for money became impossible. Hmm. If we got a lot of snow, 12 inches overnight, what do you think that means for my plan to make money? If people want to pay me to shovel their driveways, well, what do you think is the best answer here? Three, two, one. My plan to shovel snow for money became lucrative overnight when we got 12 inches of snow. If you want to make money and you have a shovel and you're strong and you have energy, you can knock on your neighbor's door and say, hey, Pay me some money and I will shovel your driveway. Maybe you can make a lot of money because there is suddenly a lot of snow. And that's what the word lucrative means. It means there is a possibility of making a lot of money. It is a lucrative business to shovel snow for your neighbors if you live in a cold climate. If you live in a warm climate, it's not lucrative to shovel snow. Maybe you can get a lawnmower and cut people's grass, or you can walk their dogs. You can do other things that might be lucrative, but shoveling snow will not be that thing if you live in the South. <laughs> All right, let's go to our next sentence. Number 13, the professor's lectures always made me fall asleep in class. I hope that's not true for my lessons. <laughs> the professor's monotonous lectures or the professor's monetary lectures. Which one do you think is best here? Which one would make you fall asleep? <laughs> Three, two, one. The professor's monotonous lectures always made me fall asleep in class. <laughs> monotonous means there's no variety. This often means that your tone of voice has no ups and downs. You are just speaking like this. You should learn about this topic. So boring, <laughs> so monotonous. <laughs> there's no variety. Either there's no variety in the topic or also in your voice that can be monotonous. 
All right, let's go to our next sentence. Number 14, with enough time and practice, it's possible to reach in almost any skill. It's possible to reach professional. It's possible to reach proficiency. These words seem pretty similar, right? But only one of them is correct. Think about it. Three, two, one. Hmm. With enough time and practice, it's possible to reach proficiency in almost most any skill. Can I say that? In almost, almost any skill. <laughs> Here we have a fixed expression, to reach proficiency. This means that you are really good at it, <laughs> to be proficient, to know a lot about something. We often use this expression to reach fluency. This is the same idea as reaching proficiency. You are reaching, you are going to a high level and you are kind of like a master. You are able to do that with few mistakes. All right, let's go to our last sentence. See if you can get our final vocabulary word. Number 15, my sister denied borrowing my jacket, but I saw it hanging in her closet. <laughs> my sister vigorously denied borrowing my jacket, or my sister virtually denied borrowing my jacket. Hmm, which one is the best here? Three, two, one. My sister vigorously denied borrowing my jacket, but I saw it hanging up in her closet. Here the word vigorously means with lots of energy and passion. So we could imagine, I say to my sister, hey, did you borrow my jacket? I can't find it. And she says, no, 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 I, I didn't borrow it. I never borrowed it. I don't like that jacket. Why? I won't, I'm not gonna borrow it. No, no, no. This is with a lot of passion. And maybe it could make you a little suspicious. <laughs> maybe she really did borrow your jacket. So here we're saying vigorously denied. No, 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 I didn't do it. <laughs> vigorously denied borrowing my jacket. Great work practicing all of these 15 C1 advanced level vocabulary words. I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments what was your score and will you take the initiative to use one of these words in the comments? Leave an intriguing comment, a fascinating comment below. I can't wait to read it. And thank you so much for learning English with me. I'll see you again next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. Bye. The next step is to download my free ebook, Five Steps to Becoming a Confident English Speaker. You'll learn what you need to do to speak confidently and fluently. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more free lessons. Thanks so much. Bye.